Good morning, my Soka universe. Well, after the Black Black Sunday, and believe it or not, I'm still really angry about how Austria played. Um, I think I can live a bit better with the Dutch loss to Germany for the simple reason that they showed character, got back into the game, and you can feel that, yeah, a draw will probably not just result in that. But yeah, yesterday was better, except me, I was actually quite super tired, I have to say, super, super tired, so I didn't get much of the games yesterday. Um, I think I tried to fall asleep, I napped a little bit, and then, yeah, saw a little bit of Portugal against Serbia, but not much, and fell asleep again. But we're not starting in... Lisbon, although that was probably the best game, when I say best game, the most competitive game. Um, we'll start in Group A, Montenegro, England, and you know, I have here my new red England jersey, 2010, away jersey. Um, so you can already guess how it went. Actually, I saw at one point that um, England was down by a goal by a goal by Vesovic in the 17th minute, which at this point uh, probably was a, a, little, a little bit lucky because England dominated seemingly proceedings, uh, but couldn't get the breakthrough and maybe there could have been an upset at hand, but no, this really young, exciting England squad, I really have to say, they, uh, there's something really good growing there. I think that the win in Spain was not, I mean, it was a little bit fluky uh, for, for the simple fact that um, Spain well could have equalized that one, but uh, still, that was a good win and there's a lot of talent coming. And one of those young ones, Mike Keen, gets the equalizer, I think, from a header in the 30th. Um, then Hudson Adoy makes a run, shoots on goal and draws Barkley. In the end, puts it into the net uh, to make it 2-1 in the 38th. And from that moment on, there was only one winner. Barkley gets a second in the 59th. Uh, Kane gets his almost mandatory goal. Uh, in the 72nd and then Sterling caps off a wonderful weekend uh, international break for him with uh, a goal himself in the 80th. Sterling is in prime uh, form at least for the national team but also I think for City. So yeah, a 5-1 win for England after the 5-0 at home to the Czech Republic. That's a hell of a start. Um, a little bit of caution though, it does remind me a little bit about uh, 10 years ago when England started the World Cup qualifying campaign under Fabio Capello with an equally impressive run of results. At least that's how it seems, I don't know them now, but you know, there was I think a 4 one in uh, Zagreb against Croatia, which is by no means uh, an easy feat. Um, but yeah. We'll see how where it will go from here. I actually have a feeling that this is an England squad that could do something, and I gotta check the odds. Um, given other results and what we have seen in June is the Nations League final four. England doesn't look all that bad for that one. I gotta say. Uh, the second game in the group was between Kosovo and Bulgaria, and yeah. Uh, I'm, if I was, let's say, not as tired and I would have to pick, I think that could have been one that I would have snuck in there, but um, that was Portugal, Serbia, Serbia, which I probably would have picked anyway. Uh, Kosovo, Bulgaria. Uh, the story is that maybe Kosovo was slightly better in the first half, but, you know, from a corner kick uh, by, uh, by Nedelev, who scored the equalizer against Montenegro, uh, Bozikov makes the 1-0 in the 39th minute and Bulgaria has a lead. Um, Bulgaria, of course, playing in their all, almost all white. I mean, they had red socks. Uh, to be honest, I really prefer them playing in their flag outfit and I think they could have well played in that one. I don't think that the 
the blue Kosovo kits are, are really nice and I uh, with me the yellow this is a, a color combination I actually do like and I honestly have to say if Bulgaria world the world have played with the first choice kit this would not have clashed that much and would have made for a really really nice jersey matchup at least that's what I think Second half, uh, Zenali gets the equalizer from a pretty cool wide range uh, shot and Kosovo's pressing for more but Bulgaria hang on to the point. And yeah, if you look at the standings right now, um, a point at Kosovo I think uh, is not actually that bad of a result. England leads this group with 6 points plus 9 goals uh, and yeah. There are six more games to, to be played, but I think everyone will say this is the team that will make it to the Euros and will qualify already. Uh, at the moment, Bulgaria with two games sits in second place with two points. The Kosovo has one game, has one point. Montenegro has also uh, two games, but played England has one point and the Czechs are currently sitting last. Um, it's an interesting group because I, I would imagine there could be a tight race for the second qualifying spot um, but it's not an easy group uh, for those. I mean uh, Kosovo, I I would say the Czechs are, are, are the ones that should be favored but after they're showing at Wembley I don't know what to tell them. Also Bulgaria did not convince me. Uh, it, I think the race for second year is pretty open. Group B with the big uh, matchup of the evening, Portugal-Serbia. Uh, Portugal started out brightly and had a pretty big chance right at the beginning, I think uh, third or fourth minute, uh, where I think just a lag got in between, uh, uh, otherwise it would have been a surefire 1-0. Uh, at that point, um, but then a nice counter-attack by Serbia, where Gavrinovic uh, suddenly is pretty free ahead of the goalkeeper, uh, Rui Patrizio, who just mows him down. I, it is somehow between, you know, Gavrinovic ran into uh, the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper just standing there, but you know, he came out pretty clear. I would, I, I would say it's a pretty clear penalty uh, decision and um, it was not clear from the TV pictures um, how the referee pointed there because at first you thought he's not, not giving anything then he's pointing to, to the uh, spot um, but yeah he got it in the end right and Tadic makes it 1-0 for Serbia. Portugal reacts angrily, Name uh, has two or three more chances, one wide shot by Ronaldo, I remember, but then uh, wide range shot by Ronaldo, but then um, Ronaldo had to come off, I think, uh, in a sprint where uh, Portugal actually, actually played with speed, which is something they couldn't do against the Ukraine, uh, but there was some muscle injury seemingly, or something that was bugging Ronaldo immediately, said to come off the field and he went off the field. Uh, I'm sure that Juventus is looking at this and hoping that it's nothing serious, but you know, uh, muscle inju injuries, he might be out for a little bit, but we gotta see. I, I think it was a cautionary thing. Um, that seemingly shocked Portugal a little bit, but um, not enough in the 42nd, uh, uh, Danilo with a really great shot. I mean, he just took, the, the, none of the Serbs uh, really, really attacked him. He was outside off of the box. He just whipped one in uh, right under the crossbar, uh, make it 1-1, which was more than justified at the point. Although at that point, Portugal seemed a little bit on the ropes. Uh, second half took a while and I think Serbia came out better. Uh, initially, but then uh, once Portugal found their momentum, Sir so was more on the back foot, and there were in the between the 70th and 80th were two big chances for poor Portugal that should have made a goal, and then probably the most contentious call of the evening, um, where after a header, I think it was around the 74th minute, 75th minute, after a header, um, a clear handball by uh, the Serbian defender who is protesting vehemently uh, that it wasn't even the goalkeeper but the referee immediately points to the spot 
and then for some reason the assistant uh, who was standing on the other side of the field who had not as good of a view as the official uh, says it wasn't a penalty it was with the shoulder and if you look at the replays it was an absolutely clear handball now uh, that it was absolutely hand handball even by uh, previous standards because you could see how he pulls the arm out that should have been a penalty for Portugal that was taken back and that really disrupted Port Port Portugal a lot uh, they had they it took them a while to get back into the game in stoppage time which uh, was extended forever they had two chances um, to get the winner that probably would have been deserved but Serbia hangs on with the help of the referee. Uh, this was a clear, clearly missed call and I don't know how the assistant could turn this around, honestly. But yeah, Port Portugal off to a shaky start. I mean, two draws at home against the two biggest opponents. I mean, it's not the worst of results but you have to go to these opponents and to get a result there. I think um, in this group, and we talk about the uh, other game, well, let, let's go there and then we'll talk about Luxembourg, Ukraine. Actually, after the great showing that Ukraine had in Lisbon, it was Luxembourg who dominated the proceedings at first, uh, had a huge chance that should have been a goal. Then they get the goal, I think, to Turpel. I've written it down here, I, you know, that's a play that I've heard before, so let's put that way. 34th, Luxembourg gets the um, goal uh, to make it 1 0. And then uh, Ukraine comes back really nicely played uh, through pass uh, to Tsigankov, who makes it 1 1 at halftime in the 40th. Uh, second half, a little bit more coming from the Ukraine. However, Luxembourg had their chances. Uh, there was especially a 2 and 1 situation. Uh, there, so it could have been uh, also going the other way. Um, but when it looked at it, this will be a draw, which would have been a huge result again for Luxembourg. And actually, after Ukraine didn't uh, got the one point, then this would, would be a lost point again. But in stoppage time, cross in and Rodriguez wants to head it away and shoots it in his own net to get Ukraine a really, really lucky win. Gotta be said. And so, the table is as follows. Ukraine, four points. Luxembourg, three points. Portugal, two. Serbia, one. And Lithuania, zero. Uh, pretty interesting standings as of now. And it has to be said, and I want to say before, this is gonna be a very tight group I have uh, between the top three spots. I think Portugal is still the favorite in my mind, but Serbia and Ukraine both have the ability to uh, snatch the two spots as well. Um, the silver lining is that whoever does not qualify out of, out of those three, they all have a playoff spot guaranteed. You, uh, Portugal, due to the final four, um, Ukraine got promoted, Serbia got pro promoted, so uh, well, well, whatever happens, uh, whoever gets left out get, gets a second chance, uh, which is not true for Luxembourg and Lithuania, but uh, you cannot see anything but those two not feature. Which leads us to the last group where I on, honestly, I, didn't, I, I mean, I saw most of the highlights. Uh, Turkey thoroughly uh, dominating Mol uh, Moldova. I have to say, the Turkish stadium was all in Turkish flags, which are waving all the time. Given the political climate lately in Turkey, it seems like it was more a rally than a soccer game. Uh, but yeah, Turkey, I think, is pretty much on the up. Um, and had a great start. They already beat Albania and now Moldova. The 4-0, I think, was flattering to Moldova. Uh, gotta be said that way. Uh, Moldova, I think, was playing in the blue jerseys in Turkey in all red, which uh, was an interesting color match. Uh, I would have expected a yellow Moldova jerseys. Uh, but yeah, what can I say? Uh, I had the feeling that Jalanoglu 
was is the engine uh, behind Turkey. Uh, although when I look at it, I think he had only one assist. Uh, he also hit the post. And yep, Turkey running uh, wild. Running wild can also be true for France, who followed up their performance in Moldova uh, with a 4 0 win over Iceland. And before I say a little bit more, how about those centenary jerseys for France? I mean, that's. Now Nike really got it right. You got the right shade. Uh, you had no frills. It really looks like the jersey, a, a throwback jersey to uh, the before Adidas days. It was Adidas who brought the red on the jersey. You didn't need, in this case, you don't need the red. It is blue, wonderful blue. You have the golden roost on there, which makes sense. It's the centenary jersey. Uh, and then paired with the plain white pants and the red socks. Oh, Modio. Un maillot magnifique. Un maillot. Le maillot. Un maillot magnifique. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Even down to the standing color. Uh, that really looks like a throwback. More to the 50s to me than the initial jersey, because if you've read my uh, post, initially for us played in white. But Magnifique, absolutely magnifique. And magnifique is probably also what we can say about France. Uh, playing with 10 world champions, uh, MTT makes it 1 0 after Cork. Cork on a kick and has his strange celebration where he just moves his uh, body quite strange. The French squad seems to be having a lot of fun overall. Uh, I think it's down to Pogba and Griezmann and wouldn't it be great to see them not only play for France together but see them playing at a club team together. I think anyone who can pull this off has a great team at their hands. And yeah, we know Pogba is saying he wants out, Griezmann is saying he wants out. Let's put it that way, let's not be heavy to Real Madrid although we sit down at the helm. Who knows, but I think if Griezmann, after all these years at Atletico, uh, moves to Real Madrid, that's not gonna be pretty. Uh, also, having said the French shirts, I really like that Iceland play with blue pants. White, blue, white. Looked perfect to me. This was probably the best jersey matchup yesterday. Um, France. Of course, Tom dominated, actually missed more chances in the first half than you might, might expect, but uh, once they got it going in the second half, took a little while. But Giroud, again, a typical Giroud goal, he's just there and touches the ball and goes into the empty net. Mbappé with a typical Mbappé goal, which means a sprint and then a shot somewhere low in the corner. That's for me the, the, the quintessential Mbappé goal. Uh, so he makes a 3 0 and Griezmann, uh, also a wonderful move. Uh, Pogba to Mbappé, who back heels it into Griezmann's uh, path and he just has to lob it into net in 84th. So France off to a 4 0 start. Looks great. And then the um, match between Andorra and Albania um, was actually more shaky. The new Albania jerseys, I know I have to write a post about these two. Uh, I know this should be the ED, the pattern on there, but it looks more like a checkerboard pattern. So, um, not sure if it looks all that uh, great in person, uh, in match. Uh, Albania hits now is a little bit on the down, I have to say. Uh, after the great Euro qualifying campaign, I think they're coming a little bit down to earth again. Uh, the scoreline 3 0 looks very easy and comfortable, but the first goal was a clear goalkeeping uh, error where the goalkeeper just wants to clear the ball with his leg and doesn't uh, miss hits it. Falls to the Albanian uh, player who just has to put it into the net. Um, a second goal, similarly, of horrible defending, make it 2 0. And then uh, the third goal is, I think, also, also deflected in it was a stoppage time, uh, which gives Albania what well, seems like a convincing win in Andorra, but it didn't seem like that overall. Uh, from the few highlights that I saw, this must have been a horrible game to watch, honestly. 
but yeah this group is interesting for two reasons first of all the world champions are in there and uh, looking great gotta say turkey is seems to be on the up uh, we know they had the miracle resurrection for euro 2016 qualifying um, at the expense of the netherlands um, but yeah turkey thoroughly convincing uh, games so far so I think they should probably now that the team that will also qualify well you know there's still many games to be played Albania and Iceland follow with three points each which were thanks to wins against Andorra but I have to say those two teams that were flying so high uh, four years ago I mean Iceland was really flying high up until right, 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 around, the, right around the World Cup uh, they're now hitting a little bit uh, a rocky patch and I think for Iceland it's also that the uh, great team from 2016 is actually you know getting a little a little a little bit older and maybe there's for such a small nation there's not much coming uh, from the youth ranks so I think it's one of those waves that has to be just uh, powered through and we'll get from there and for Albania I have a similar feeling they were not as high as Iceland but you know they had a pretty good qualifying com com campaign and they looked like a team that no one really wants to play um, the two showings didn't convince me uh, so far so yeah uh, we just have to wait and see it also in the Nations League Albania did not play that great but I think they avoided relegation uh, because they uh, at least got some uh, win as far as I can remember. So yeah, uh, those two are sit sitting in third and fourth and then Andorra and Moldova, um, they were always going to be the, I don't want to say whipping boys because, uh, although Mol I mean the, the funny thing is when Austria had to play Moldova twice now in qualifying, it was always said that Moldova is not a team that you just uh, score a lot of goals against, which uh, maybe as it was uh, 10, 20, 20 years ago when you would expect 5, 6 or whatever goals, that's not happening. But Moldova regularly gives up uh, quite easily 4 goals, especially if they're hit by something uh, better. So, not whipping boys, but also definitely the minus. Andorra and Moldova, it will be interesting to see who will end up on top. I would give it to Moldova because I think there's a little bit more there. Uh, but we gotta wait and see. So that was the fifth Euro qualifying day. Um, quick update, I have everything prepared for my African qualifiers. Um, I did not shoot it yesterday um, and I probably won't uh, today as well. Um, I think I want to finish with the Euro qualifiers and then I will post it uh, probably on Thursday because there is not much happening anyway. Uh, for the club games, so I think it might be uh, a good video right there. So um, I want to do that on Thursday, uh, potentially Friday, but probably Thursday uh, to have it posted to give you everything for the African qual qualifiers. There was a little bit of drama there, so um, that's gonna be interesting. And yeah, we're gonna have a draw for the African Cup of Nations. Soon so wait for that on probably Thursday and yeah I'm gonna if it's I'm gonna probably make one more short video of my international collection I don't know yet which uh, it's gonna be a surprise to me too and then we're gonna be back in the club game but before that we have a slate of games today uh, I always want to say was the Sweden I guess Norway was probably uh, one one game that looked a little bit interesting so to, to, today. I'm, I'm a little bit missing the big matchup, uh, mostly because uh, Italy and Spain are playing minnows. But hey, can Italy score more than two goals as against Finland? We gotta see. Anyway, let me know what you watched and how whether you agree with my assessment of all these games that I talked about. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel 
all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.